Well, heck, honey, she's not as bad as you think she is. Hey, I never said that. You don't have to. She knows exactly what you think about her. Well, she wouldn't come to our wedding. What you think I feel? I mean, you brought it up. I didn't. No, no, please. Let her get it off her chest, Jack. It's better now than in front of the women. Oh, God forbid they should hear the truth. How is my dear mother-in-law? <laughs> well, she is fine. She is just fine. She just had her 73rd birthday, and she's still going strong. And looking forward to seeing all of you, I can tell you. Oh, I can just imagine. She must have that red carpet just rolled right up to the driveway. How is she taking it, Bob? Well, I steer clear of those things, Jack. It's Toppy. Toppy talks to her every day. You know, church functions, that sort of thing. I'm telling you, those two, they get along like two peas in a pod. <laughs> and, of course, um, Doris being her only granddaughter... Well, as you can imagine, the sun rises and sets on her. <laughs> you two are going to get along just swell, Hub. She's a real whippersnapper in school. Are you boys good in school, are you? Well, we're okay. Yes? Well, we got a fine school in New Bedford, real fine. And your Grandma Bailey gives a scholarship every year to the student with the highest grades. And my Doris has won it two years in a row. <laughs> well, heck... You know Toppy, heart of gold. She's not as bad as you think she is, honey. I never said that. You don't have to. She knows exactly how you feel about her. She wouldn't come to my wedding. How does she think I would feel? Honey. He brought it up, Jack. I didn't. No, no, no. Let her get it off her chest, Jack. It's better now than in front of the women. Oh, God forbid they should hear the truth. How is my dear mother-in-law? Well, she is fine. She is just fine. She just had her 65th birthday, and she's still going strong. And looking forward to seeing all of you, I can tell you. Oh, I just bet she's got that red carpet rolled right down the driveway. How is she taking it, Bob? Me and Honey and the kids coming back? Oh, I steer clear of those subjects, Jacko. No, it's Toppy. Toppy speaks to her every day. You know, church meetings, that sort of thing. I'm telling you, those two, they get along like two peas in a pod. And, of course, Doris being her only granddaughter, well, as you can imagine, the sun rises and sets on her. You two should get along just swell, huh? She's a real whippersnapper in school. Are you boys good in school, are you? We're okay. Yes? Well, we got a fine school in New Bedford, real fine. Your Grandma Bailey gives a scholarship every year. I will make this brief. You are no longer welcome to stay on at the house on the farm. You should consider finding charity among your own family members. Don't worry, I'm, I would never consider living off the Baileys. I, I'm just going to go up to North Bay with Joey. He's got a couple of rooms, and at least until I find a job. No, honey, Mother and me, we've given every consideration to this. And no matter how we look at it, your situation is really grim. Well, you needn't concern yourself with my situation. I mean, neither of you. I don't want anything from you. I'll be fine. Out of a sense of family duty, though, honey, for the time being... Children stay here in New Bedford where they will have a stable home. I won't leave my family. They need me now more than I'm ever. I'm leaving my children. My children need me now more than they've ever needed me. I will not allow the boys to go. And that's final. What the hell are you doing? Honey, talking? you just hear her out. If you are ever going to get back on your feet and provide a decent home for your children, you'd best put your pride in your pocket and take some honest advice. Leave them with those that have the means to take care of them. They're mine. They're my kids, and you have no right to them, no right whatsoever. Honey, all I have You'll handle them. nothing. You're no better than she is. I will not allow my grandchildren to be dragged through the gutter and end up in some paper orphanage. Joe, let's go. Now you listen to me. The boys are staying here. The baby is going to Claude and Matilda. They have no children. She'll be cared for properly. You heartless bitch. Oh, now, now, we're not going to have blasphemy in this house. We, we had Edna send that baby over early this morning. She's mine. You, you can't. That's kidnapping. If I put in one call to the New Bedford police, they'll be here in no time flat, merely on my say-so. They'll put you out of town so fast your head will spin. Is that true? You can do it. I'll hire lawyers. No. I'll please. fight you. Forget that. Lawyers cost money, and she'll beat you at that game every time. Think of the boys. 
think of dragging them through court. Believe me, that's something you don't want to see. It would be better if you would just go away, quietly. Winter will be here before you know it. And you'll have a hard enough time supporting yourself, let alone three small children. Oh, she's not wrong, honey. You haven't got a job, and all I got is a few days every week. And how could you do that with a baby and all? I'm glad you've got a grain of sense, young man. And as for you, I'm doing you a favor. You may not see that now, but one day you will. And you'll thank me. I will burn in hell before I'll thank you. Get her out of here. You're not going to do this to me. I don't care if it's weeks. I don't care if it's months. But I will be back here and I will take my children. I know exactly what you're doing. I know exactly. Just because you failed with Jack doesn't mean that you're going to have a chance with my children. You killed him. No, you killed him. As sure as you trapped him into marrying you. Let me be brief. You are no longer welcome to stay at the house at Bass Lake. I suggest you look among your own relatives for charity. Don't worry, I would never even dream of living off the Baileys. I thought I'd... I'd move back to North Bridge. Joe has a rooming house there. Until I can get a job. I have arranged a meeting with Robert in the morning before breakfast. I would like you to attend. Did your brother stay over? He camped out by the river. He may attend if he wishes. Mother and I have given this every consideration. And no matter how you slice it. Well, you needn't concern yourselves about it. I don't want anything from either of you. Yes. Out of a sense of family duty, for the time being, the children can stay here in New Bedford where they will have a stable home. Thank you very much, but I would never leave my family, not under any circumstances. I will not allow you to take the children away with you, and that is fine. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey, but we are going to be just fine. If you were ever going to get back on your feet and provide a decent home for these children, you'd best put your pride in your pocket and take some honest advice. Leave them with those who have the means to care for them. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bailey, but my children's welfare is my business. I will not stand by and watch you wreck my grandchildren's lives. Come on, Joe, let's go. You listen to me, young lady. The boys are staying here with me. The baby is going to Matilda and Cousin Hughes. Honey, think. This is for the best. Oh, I can't get out of here. Joe, come on. Stay where you are, Mr. Callahan. You'll never be able to hold down a job and look after the children. You crazy. You lay a finger on my children, then I'll get a lawyer. Oh, you wouldn't want to go through such an experience. With no job and no money, you'd be declared an unfit mother. Any judge would send those children back to me so fast your head would spin. Lawyer's custom bundle. Let's just settle this quietly. We'll get you a job. Maybe we can get the kids back in a couple of weeks. No, no! Now, nobody here is trying to hurt you or the children. Matilda is a fine, loving woman. They don't have their own children. She will look after that child as if it was her own. I'm doing you a favor. You may not see that now, but you will love And you'll thank me. It's only for a while. You are going to get back on your feet and things will get better. Come on now, let's go tell the kids. Please. Get your hands off of me. Look, this isn't going to do any good. 
You are not gonna do this to me. I'm coming back for my kids. I know exactly what you're doing. Just because you failed with Jack doesn't mean you're gonna get a chance with my boys. How you doing? Good. Good? Is your mom and dad around? No. My name's Max. I have my tent pitched down the shore. I mean, I knew it was, I, well, I was almost sure it was Crown Land, but I didn't want you to think I was here to trespass. Oh. <laughs> so where's your mom and dad? Um, they're having a nap right now. Oh, I see. Yeah. So what's your name? Pete and, and Sam. Pete? Sam? No, I thought this place was all boarded up. Oh, no, we live here now. Too. I see. Hey, you guys. I'm not having much luck around here with the fish. Would you guys know where there's a good hole? Oh, there aren't any. Gee. And I guess Trout Lake's kind of a misleading name. Well, what he means is they're out there, but they just keep moving around. So, you know, you have to kind of keep looking for them. I think right now they're over on the other side of the lake, right? Way over there. Oh, way over. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. Don't forget to tell your mom and dad to drop by. It's Max. I'll see you around. See you. Bye. Mm-hmm. How you doing, boys? How's life treating you? Your mom and dad around? No. Well, my name's Max Sutton. I got my tent pitched down the shore there. I was almost sure it was Crown Land. I just didn't want anyone to think I was trespassing. So where are your folks? Um, they're taking a nap. So what's your name? Uh, I'm Pete, and um, he's Sam. Pete, Sam? You know, I heard this place was boarded up. Hey, look, the fish aren't biting. I was hoping to ask your dad where the good fishing holes are around here. There aren't any. Gee, I guess Bass Lake's kind of a misleading name. Well, they're out there. That they, they just keep moving around. Um, right now, I think they're over at the other side of the lake. Way over. OK. You tell your parents I dropped by. See you boys later. Bye. Action. Oh, look, sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm okay. Good. You're one tough young guy. Hey, are you a fast runner? Well, you got the build for it. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm okay. Yeah, because I'm starting a track and field program at the school. If you're gonna be around, why don't you try out for the team after your leg heals? Hey, I bet you shoot basketball. Well, we shoot a little. Mm hmm. Well, why don't you try out for my team in the fall? I mean, if you're gonna be around. Cut. Okay, let's do one more. I just like to see. If... Okay, don't slow the scene down. Okay. Let's, let's go, buddy. Come on. All right, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm okay. Good. You know, you're one tough young guy. Hey, are you a fast runner? Because you look like you got the build for it. Well, I'm OK. Because I'm starting a track and field program at the school. If you're going to be around, why don't you try it for the team when your leg heals? It shouldn't be too long. Hey, I bet you shoot basketball. Oh, a little. Yeah, a little. Well, why don't you try it for the team in the fall? I mean, if you guys are going to be around. Maybe. Maybe he's good. Sorry, didn't mean to hurt you. Okay. Yeah, you're one tough young guy, aren't you? You're a fast runner. You look like you got the bills for it. Thanks. Okay. Well, I'm starting a track and field program at the school. I was wondering, look. Oh, wounds like that bleed profusely. They look worse than they are. 
I've tended many an injured man in my day, Hubert. And doctors around here were as scarce as hen's teeth. You're going to be just fine. And look, if you're going to be around New Bedford, why don't you stop by the school? Do you play basketball? Yeah, a little. Well, good. You can come by, practice your basket shots while your leg's healing. Get ready for the team in the fall. Does that sound good? Yeah, maybe. Maybe's good. Your grandfather made his fortune in this area. Silver mining. When he came here, he had nothing. He didn't have anything worth mentioning when he asked me to marry him. By the time your father came along, things were different. By then, it meant something around here to be a bailey. Your grandfather used to say Jack was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He said I spoiled him. I didn't. That was nonsense. I never spoiled any of my children. But maybe I did love him too much. Do you think a mother can do that, Henry? I don't know. Me neither. I don't believe your mother can take care of you properly. I think she can. Well, however that may be, she is your mother. And of course, she wants to see you from time to time. I suppose we should do something about that. Grandfather loved that house. I want to take you boys out there more often. Your father always enjoyed it. Yeah, he told me. Did he? Sit down, Henry. Henry, I don't believe your mother's capable of looking after you. She can take care of us, all right. Be that as it may, she is still your mother. And of course, she wants to see you from time to time. I suppose we'll have to do something about that. How could you just lose two boys? I'm terrible. I'm a terrible, awful person. For pity's sake, Grace. I am, Mother. I am. I buy movie magazines. What? And remember, you said you thought you could smell a scent on me one time. I do. I do wear scent. Grace. Evening in Paris. Sometimes I dab it behind my ears when I go downtown. I'm that wicked. And one time... One time I took a car ride from Judd Wainwright, but I, that was 11 years ago, and I was so young, oh, I didn't... Oh, stop talking right now. It's true, though. I know it's true, and I don't want to hear a bit about it. I want to know where those boys are. Now, you will start again from the beginning, and you will tell me so that I can understand you. <gasps> oh. I left the boys outside the Golden Dragon when I went in to buy that blessed magazine. <gasps> I had to wait extra long at cash because some bus customers were paying for their coffees, and then Mr. Wu started wiping off the counter. The and... bus? Oh, my God. <gasps> what bus was it? It was a North Bay Express, I, I guess. What if they were <gasps> kidnapped? My God, just like the Linford baby. Oh, Grace, people are not kidnapped in New Bedford. No. No, it is that blessed woman. What woman? <gasps> that honey. That's what's happened. She's, she's come and she's stolen them. <gasps> Would Honey do that? That doesn't make much sense. Oh, well, then you tell me what does make sense. Of course, that's what's happened. She has come and she's taken them on the bus to North Bay. What'll we do? <gasps> well, well, you'll just have to go to North Bay and bring them back. Me? <gasps> well, who else is going to do it? You'll take the next bus. In the morning? Mother? <gasps> 
I, I can't. Now, don't be ridiculous. You are a grown woman. You are capable of getting on a bus. If two young boys can do it, you certainly can. <laughs> I don't know North <laughs> Bay. They do. Should we call them? You know Joe Callahan doesn't have two nickels for a telephone. Isn't there a downstairs neighbor? Oh, and what would her name be? <laughs> we don't have to call anyone. <laughs> you will get on the next bus, and you will <laughs> go back, and you will get them back here. <laughs> Now go and hold your nose and drink a drink of water. And tell me so that I can understand you. Oh, God. I left the boys waiting outside of Mabel's cafe when I went in to buy that blessed magazine. And then I had to wait extra long at cash because some bus customers were paying for their coffees. And then Mr. Wu starts to wipe the counter. The bus. Oh, my God. Do you know what bus it was? It was the Northbridge Express, I guess. Oh, what if they were <gasps> kidnapped? My God, this is just like the Lindbergh baby. Oh, people in New Bedford are not kidnapped. It's that blessed woman. What woman? That honey. Yes, that's what's happened. She's come and taken them on the bus. <gasps> She's stolen them. <gasps> Would honey do that? That doesn't make much sense. Well, just what does make sense to you? Of course that's what's happened. Well, what'll we do? You're going to Northbridge and bring them back. Me? No, shouldn't, shouldn't Bob go down and pick them up? I don't need Robert gloating over us. We can handle two unruly boys. You will take the next bus. In the morning? Mother, I can't. You're a grown woman. If two boys can take it, you can too. But I don't know Northbridge, and they do. I think that we should call them. You are going to Northbridge, and you will bring back those boys. Now hold your nose and drink a glass of water. You're so sure the boys are with their mother? They have to be. Oh, Judd, they've just got to be. Well, I, I'm sure they are then. Really? Oh, absolutely. I don't know what I'm going to say to her. Well, what can I say to her? I'll have to say, honey, I've come about the boys. That's what mother would say. I'll just say it like I mean it. Just like that. Got another chiclet? Oh. You're not eating these things, are you? Because oh. you're not supposed to swallow them, you know. They'll, they'll twist up your insides like an elastic band. You know, it's a, it's a shame your mother keeping you all tucked away in that old house. I always thought you were the prettiest thing going. You were the only one then. Pretty little nose. Pretty little hands. Oh, well, don't go looking at my old hands. They're all rough and chafed. I ought to wear gardening gloves. Well, I got something in my case. We'll clear that right up. You still in that line of sales? Oh, yeah, this is my territory. Hmm. North Bay, New Bedford, Logan's Mines. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's see those fingers. Come here. That's awfully soothing. Well, you, can, you can keep the sample if, if you like. I, I, I've got plenty. <laughs> you need any medicated combs? No. It's a wonder you never got married. <laughs> Big old barrel like me. Who'd want to be bothered? Oh, don't be. Plenty, I'm sure. Besides, you're not so... Well, you're just about right. <gasps> well, if you say so. That's what I'll say to Honey. I'll say, Honey, I've come about the boys. That's what I'll say. Just like that. I don't know what I'm going to say to her. 
Well, what can I say to her? I'll just have to say, honey, I've come about the boys. That's what Mother would say, and I have to say it like I mean it. You got another chicklet? Oh, sure. You're not eating these, are you? Because you're not supposed to swallow them. You just tie up your insides like rubber bands. <laughs> Gee, it's great to see you out and about again. It's really been a while. Mm -hmm. I've thought about you a lot. Well, I don't know why you would. No, I, I do. I do. I'll never forget that time you didn't come to the graduation dance when I asked you. You never did get out enough. Well, no, that's not true. I get out plenty. I garden a lot. I find that it's good for the fresh air. It's not so good for the hands, though, because they get all rough and chafed. And Well, I got a sample in my case. I'll clear that right up. So it's... You're in the same line of sales then, ointments and such. And... Oh, yeah, this is my territory, you know, North Bridge, New Bedford, Golden, Pineberry. Ah! <laughs> Get it to the hand. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's soothing. Here, you can, <clears throat> you can keep the sample. Oh, and, uh, oh here, have a, a medicated comb. Oh. <laughs> It's a wonder that you never got married. Big old barrel like me would even be interested. Oh, well, plenty, I bet. Besides, you're not so... Well, you're just about right. Thanks. Oh, Lord, what am I going to say to Honey? I, I don't know. I'll, I'll just say, Honey, I've come about the boys. That's what I'll say. I'll, I'll just say it like that. Are you gonna go in? Uh, mm, I guess. I'm here now. We nearly met the other day. When you almost got run over. Oh. I'm Max. I'm Honey Bailey. Right. I teach your boys, Jim. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. It's not easy meeting new folks, huh? No, it's <laughs> not. You know, I think it's a lot like swimming. A lot less pain if you dive right in. Yeah. Let's go in. Okay. <laughs> oh I guess I'm here now. We nearly met the other day, you remember? You were almost run down. I'm Max Sutton. Yes, hi. I'm, I'm Honey Bailey. I know. I teach your boys, Jim. Hi. Are you on your way? Yep. Good night, Max. Very nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Look, look do you play tennis? <laughs> tennis? Yeah, there are some courts behind the school. I was thinking of expanding the activities of our little social club. Oh, well, I... Look, it's nothing <laughs> formal. Tennis! That is ripping. I used to bat the odd ball around the old Pengdan in Kuala Lumpur. Well, that was a test, you know, 100 degree weather. But I've, we have a few full days left. Well, yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, playing if there was a whole gang there. Yeah. Well, we really must get that organized. Now, you're not walking home at this hour, honey. I'll drive you. Come on. Night. Good night, honey. Hey, honey, are you on your way? Oh, oh good night, Max. It was really nice meeting you. Oh, yeah. Look, you play tennis? I was thinking of expanding the activities of our little social club. Well, I... Nothing formal. Tennis? What a ripping idea. Do you know, I used to bash the odd ball around in the old padang at Kuala Lumpur. I suppose we have a few good fall days left. Well, I suppose I wouldn't mind if there was a whole gang going. There you go. You must organize that, Sutton. Look, you're not to walk home at this hour, all right? Let me drop you. Oh. How does it all look from up there? Simply a ripping. <laughs> oh, my God. Now you're even talking like him. So typical. He gives the orders, we do the work. Leadership is an essential quality of the police services. No, 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 Pat. No, no, you're two full inches off. Up, up, up. Oh, much better. There's a good pet. <laughs> and does he, honey, does he say fetch and play dead too? And what if he did, huh? What business is it of yours? I just think that Percy is a darn lucky man to have a girl of your quality. And I just hope he knows it.
Honey, how's it all looked from up there? Simply ripping. <laughs> Simply ripping? You're talking like him now? This is so typical. His lordship gives the orders and we do the work. Leadership is an essential quality of the police services. Uh, no, no, no. You're two full inches off, pet. Up. Up. That's it. There's a good pet. So does he uh, ask you to play dead and fetch, too? What business is it of yours? Just think that he's pretty darn lucky to have a girl of, of your quality. And I just hope he knows it. I hope you're not too upset about things not working out with Piercy. Well, I think it was pretty much my own fault anyway. Why would you say that? I, just, I thought that a man could solve my problems. Maybe. No. No, I'm not ready for that sort of thing. Okay. Does it mean that I can't use all the friends I can get? Ow, 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 ow. What? It it's hurts. I <laughs> don't be such a baby. Well, it hurts. Uh huh. Oh, 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 oh. Good. Good. I hope you're not too upset about things not working out with uh, Percy. It's my own fault, really. Thinking that a man could solve my problems. Well, maybe the right one could. No. I'm not ready for that. Okay. But... I could sure use a friend in this place. Ow! Oh, come on. It hurts. Oh, don't be such a baby. I'm not being a baby. It's iodine and it it's, hurts. It's a little tiny. This is an open wound. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm.